In this video, I will take you through what a component in Figma is, how to create your first card component in Figma, and how using a master component will allow you to save time and be much more productive with all your design work in future. The component system in Figma is one of the most powerful tools you can use. A component is a UI element that you can use across multiple designs as many times as you want. The way this works is you create a master component and create instances of this component to reuse wherever you need. The instances or copies are linked to the master component, meaning that if you update the master component, all the linked instances will update as well. To illustrate how powerful this is, Imagine you've got a design file that has 30 different buttons on it. Maybe the branding for these buttons needs to be updated, changing the color from blue to red. As the buttons in this design are all instances of a master component, you only have to update the master component, changing the color there, and all the instances across that design will update too. Pretty cool and such a time saver. However, the instances aren't locked to that master component forever. For example, if you have one button out of the 30 that you need to be a different color from all the rest and not update when you update the master file, you can select that and override the color property. So you can still update the master component with things like the border radius and text styles, but the overridden color of that single instance won't update. So we have a basic understanding of what a component is. Let's dig into creating our own card design, creating a component from that design and then creating multiple instances from that master component. So I'm here in a new file in Figma. I want to create a new card component that I can use multiple times in my designs. The card is going to be made up of an image, a title, some descriptive text, and a link. First, I'm going to draw a rectangle as a placeholder for where I want the image to go. Next, we're going to need a title. So let's add some text here. It's a little bit small, so I'll use my global textiles to change this to an H5. If you need any help setting up global textiles, I've created another video on that, which you can watch here. Okay, so we have an image and a title. Now we need some smaller text to let the user know a little more detail about the card. Let's get that on there now. I'll change the type style to paragraph to give the title and supporting text a little bit of contrast. Now the final bit is to add a link so users know it's a clickable element. Again, I'll add some text. I want this to stand out a bit. So I'll make it bold, hit Command B on a Mac or Control B on Windows, and then I'll underline it. Hit Command U on a Mac or Control U in Windows. I also want the color to be a bit different from the text so it stands out. With the link element selected, slide over to the Fill Property section on the right. You can manually enter a color or select from a predefined color palette. I've also done a video on setting up global color palettes. So if you wanna watch that, click here. For now, I'll use one of my predefined colors. This one here will do. Okay, perfect. You have all the UI elements ready to make your first component, but it's not quite a card yet. I'm going to use Figma's auto layout system to create a card from all these elements. That makes sure that the card is responsive and we can use it across multiple screen sizes. So select all the elements together by dragging your cursor around them. You can slide over to the properties panel on the right and click the plus button next to the auto layout here or hit shift A on your keyboard. I'll set the background fill to white. Give it eight pixels of border radius to smooth down the sharp corners a little bit. And I'll add a bit of drop shadow. Click here next to effects. I'm not happy with the default settings for the drop shadow, so I'll click the sun icon here and set the Y axis to one. This reduces the distance of the drop shadow from the card, and I think that looks a lot better. It's all a little bit tight in the card, so I'll add some top and bottom padding for a bit more space. I'll set it to 24 pixels, and that's looking much better. The next thing you'll want to do is make sure all the elements inside your auto layout card are set to fill. This is to make sure that when your component is resized, all the elements in it resize too. So select all the elements inside the auto layout, head over to the properties panel and change horizontal resizing here to fill. Now, I want a real image in here too. We set our placeholder earlier with the gray box. 
So this is where the image will go. First, I'll select the rectangle image placeholder. Now hit the resources button up here, select the plugins tab and search for Unsplash. Unsplash is a community powered image platform where the community has uploaded images that you can use for free. It's integrated into Figma with this plugin, so you can import images directly without having to go to their website. When you found the Figma Unsplash plugin, hit run. You now get access to the Unsplash library within Figma. You can search for any image you like. I'm gonna use one of the uh, predefined categories. Animals sounds good, and I'll select this one. You can see that the image has been placed in the rectangle you created. It's also been scaled to fit the rectangle perfectly without any distortion. Let's rename our new auto layout so we don't get confused in future. I'll call this one card. Imaginative, I know. So your new card is pretty much done. All you have to do now is turn it into a component. So with your card selected, you can either click this icon up here, right click on it and select create component, or if you wanna be super slick, Use the keyboard shortcut Option, Command and K on a Mac or Control, Alt and K in Windows. Done. Your new component is ready to use. You'll notice that your new component is outlined in purple and has four solid diamond shapes next to its name. This is an indicator that this is a component and not just a standard UI element. Next thing we want to do is create some instances of this card. As a reminder, an instance is a copy or child of the master component. Any updates you make to the master component will also update all the instances of that component too. There are a few ways we can create instances. First is to search your assets panel, which is up here. You'll see the new component is now visible in there. You can literally drag and drop this down into your design. Another way is to copy and paste the master component. And the final way is to hold the option key on a Mac or the alt key in Windows and click and drag your master component. If we look quickly into the layers panel in the left hand side, you'll see the four components we have on screen. One of them has a different icon. The card component with the four diamonds is your master component. The single outline diamond are instances of a master component. Now let's see how updating our master component changes the instances. So we have our master on the left, and let's say we want to change the color of the link. I'll select the link layer in the master component and choose another color. All three of the instances of that component update as well. You can also do the same for the image, the title, and the paragraph text too. I mentioned overrides earlier, and this is a good example of where you might want to use one. If you were using a card like this, you would probably want a different image for each card. Instead of updating the master component, which would update all the cards, we can select an instance and update that independently. That way, all the cards now have a distinct image from the others. If for some reason you need to revert one of your overridden components back to the original state, you can right click on it and select reset all changes. This is a great way to play and experiment with variations of a component you might be designing. Using components in your designs is a brilliant way to remove repetitive tasks that slow your design work down. It's good to try and use components as early on in your design as possible, so you don't have to go back later and try and fit them in. This video only touched on the very basics of what you can do with components. In future videos, we will be digging deeper into what you can do on a more advanced level with things like variants and properties. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Cheers.